everyone, welcome back. We have another episode of Derm Reacts and you can see that we have board certified dermatologist, Dr. Jenny Liu from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. I'm excited for this one because we're looking today at Lisa. She is 20 years old. Mm -hmm. She's dealt with lots of different things, hormonal acne. She has dry but sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is the type of patient you probably see regularly, very, very right? Common. So we're gonna look at her routine today and hopefully come up with some answers mm -hmm. for her. But before we get started, just a reminder that that while Dr. Jenny Liu is a board certified dermatologist, this is not medical advice. Mm -hmm. We are purely doing this for information and also for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, I hope you guys are doing well. My name is Lisa, I'm 20 years old. I reside in Houston, Texas, and I do have a couple of like conditions diagnosed by dermatologists before, and I'm currently still seeking out dermatologists. So they have diagnosed me that have hormonal acne, and also um, hyperpigmentation, dryness, flakiness, no matter what the season is, what is the weather, my skin is just dry, flaky, sensitive, acne prone. When a person says that a dermatologist has diagnosed them with hormonal acne mm -hmm. and hyperpigmentation, what does that usually mean? Hormonal acne is a type of acne we see a lot in adult women. You know, we used to think acne is just a condition of teenage years, but no, I actually feel like I see a lot more adult women with acne and tends to be in this jawline or U-shaped distribution. Sometimes some will get it on their forehead and often tends to be a little bit deeper, more cystic-like instead of just the normal teenage acne where predominantly could be more clogged pores. And these often, because they're deeper, are more inflammatory, so can lead to hyperpigmentation. And she has a little bit more melanin in her skin, so higher risk of hyperpigmentation because of that. And I just recently finished the cycle, so it's like there's a couple flare-ups, like there's a bump, like acne bumps here, and then kind of a few right here on the cheek, redness, dry, and there's some right here. Sometimes I have like a one, two, or three acne on my chest, sometimes one on the back. Sometimes I have one like above my lips and so forth. The one on the lip is always yeah. so annoying. It is. So, so yeah. annoying. And I kind of forgot to mention earlier is that, you know, the hormonal acne uh, commonly women will know right before they are periods, but some women actually will just have it throughout the entire month and maybe flare a little bit more right before they menstruate and not uncommon to have a little bit on their chest and back too. I'm actually one of those women where mm -hmm. just before, like a week before, I'll suddenly get a couple of pimples and they're always in the same area, mm -hmm. always. Why is that? Me too, I, you know, I don't know. Some some think maybe just the oil glands are more sensitive to that hormonal fluctuation. Yeah. But you know, we know the acne, the pathogenesis of the acne is very complex, but you know, when in that hormone simulation of sebum production does play a role, and which is why you often get that deeper pimple that won't come to a head. Not sure because of the dryness I have on my lips, so I do use chapstick time to time to help it, to assist with it and so forth and I don't really wear makeup often. I wear it like once in a while for like certain occasions like weddings, um, parties and so forth but in a full year, not even like once or twice, nothing more than three. And moving on to my skincare routine. Okay, so before we get into her skincare products, uh, you just heard everything that she's dealing with. I think the thing that stands out to me the most is that mm -hmm. she says throughout any weather, mm -hmm. any season, she's getting this dry, sensitive skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I tend to personally find when I start to like dig into this with people when I'm talking to them, that they're using a lot of products mm -hmm. that cause this dryness. Yep. What do you think? Absolutely true, but also I'm noticing, and it could just be the lighting too, but when she says she's getting dry, has sensitive skin, she's kind of pointing to that mid-face area, and I'm noticing a little bit of subtle redness kind of in her middle forehead between her eyebrows and down the folds of the cheeks and that could be a little bit of east overgrowth almost along that spectrum of like seborrheic dermatitis mm. and with her sensitive skin I mean she may even have a little hint of rosacea which we often can see the two conditions running like together. Like parallel? Yeah, but also it could be, you know, the products she's using as well or on top of that making things worse. In the morning, I do use a La Roche Posay Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. That cleanser great? I love it. So she's using a hydrating cleanser. Mm -hmm. Do you think for somebody who has acne, hydrating cleansers like that are cleansing enough? 
absolutely, you know, especially in her situation where she has dry skin, you don't want to overly cleanse and strip your skin's natural sebum because that itself can lead to more skin barrier breakdown and can cause inflammation and further exacerbate the acne. It's funny that to hear you say that. So I remember the first time I introduced a hydrating cleanser to my husband. <laughs> it was the same reaction that a lot of people will give mm -hmm. me. And they're like, ew, this feels like it's gonna leave a film. It's almost like washing my face with lotion. You know, they, they get really upset about it and they almost feel like this is not going to cleanse their skin. Yeah, I think we have to get away from the fact of like feeling a squeaky clean. That, you know, it's not for everyone. Obviously, if you have oily skin, you want to have a cleanser to effectively remove that sebum. But we also have really come a long ways with our cleansing technology. And you remember it, cleansing, even with water, can remove the natural moisturizing factor that your skin makes and can cause dryness. So you definitely, when it comes to cleansing, I think gentle is better. Yeah, agree, yeah. 100%. A moisturizer, which is from La Roche Posse as well, double repair facial moisturizer. And then lastly, to tie the day, the daytime routine is pretty much a sunscreen from CRV SPF 50. It's a small little bottle, which is I carry around with me to add in more throughout the day because I am a college student. I'm always outside walking around, walking to my classes and so forth. And then that's pretty much for my morning routine. There was one more item that I used in my morning routine a month and a half ago-ish, was by my dermatologist, which is the AMZ Topical Foam. I had stopped using it because I saw there was more effective for my night routine treatment that she gave me. And moving on to my night routine. So she has a pretty straightforward, mm -hmm. simple morning skincare yeah. routine, yeah. which I'm sure as a dermatologist, you're like spot Love on. Love it. Right. I think that's great. She's cleansing, she's moisturizing, she's photo protecting. The only one to comment I want to make is looking at her sunscreen, I believe it's the CeraVe stick sunscreen. It is, yep. And I love stick sunscreens, but really best used for reapplication. I really don't love it as a, just your first morning, that base sunscreen. Mm -hmm. And especially in someone who is struggling with hyperpigmentation, I think making sure that you're getting a good sunscreen, knowing the amount that you're putting on, because it takes a lot to get that SPF right. coverage. And you just don't know how much you're getting with that stick. So great for reapplication, like she mentioned, mm -hmm. as a college student, but I would recommend going with like an actual like lotion or cream sunscreen yeah. that she likes. I think a lot of people don't understand this concept of the even application mm -hmm. of a sunscreen. So yeah. just like you said, the stick is totally fine, mm -hmm. especially for reapplication. Right. But I think what happens with sticks a lot of the time and what their purpose was years ago was yeah. like, I think of like those lifeguards mm -hmm. that would really focus the stick right on their nose area, <laughs> yeah. right? And they'd like yeah. do this like thick, thick layer yeah. where you would see it. And I feel like that's what sticks were kind of mm -hmm. meant for is that mm -hmm. reapplication mm -hmm. constantly, almost yeah. like your lip balm, Yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely that's why we you hear us mentioning like apply your sunscreen reapply is because like you want that even distribution even layer to form the film otherwise it doesn't work mm -hmm. as well and yeah. I can imagine with like a stick sunscreen I've never used the CeraVe V one but mm -hmm. just judging from the ones that I have used yeah. in the past you would have to really go with a thick layer across yeah. every bit yeah. of your face and neck and yeah. stuff and also you know remember like when we do testing a sunscreen I don't know if there's a lot of studies on sticks so we don't actually know like how much like passes you need to get the adequate coverage. But mm -hmm. we do know like in lotions and creams that mounts to about a teaspoon. So half for your face and half for your neck and chest. What did you think about that prescription that she decided to stop using? Yeah, so that looks like the minocycline foam. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a nice product. It has been shown in clinical studies to help with inflammatory acne. It's one of those products where I, it's not my first go-to. I don't like antibiotics on their own orally or topically because they work for a while and they stop working and often there can be a high risk of resistance if you use it alone. So I think if she had some other ingredients in her routine, which I think we'll get into a little bit, I think it's fine to use, but if she didn't find it effective, I think she can definitely stop. It's okay. not my number one go-to. Why do you think that a dermatologist will prescribe this then? Because I do see this a lot yeah. where like antibiotics get prescribed. Yeah. You know, they do work well because, you know, a lot of the red zits, pimples that we have are inflammatory. So antibiotics help to calm down the inflammation, the redness, and also does kind of decrease that bacteria that causes acne. And so it does work. 
but you just can't really use a long term alone by itself. I know I always, I, so I'm always curious to hear this. Like I'm always a big fan of like putting a vitamin C mm -hmm. in your morning skincare yeah, routine. Is yeah. there anything that we would want to, I, not that I want to add more yeah, to a person's yeah. skincare routine, yeah. but is there anything that we would want to add maybe? Yeah. I think a couple of things, absolutely. You know, a couple of things to think about is number one, if she is, you know, still bothered by her acne, she can consider maybe tweaking or adding an ingredient that might help with that. Mm -hmm. Or similarly, an ingredient to help with hyperpigmentation, like an antioxidant vitamin C serum that can help as a, you know, to pr uh, protect against like the ultraviolet radiation pollution and help with the hyperpigmentation. Or even if she finds that the moisturizer isn't hydrating enough, consider adding like more hydrating serum. Mm -hmm. I think those are extras, but she definitely has the basics down, which is what I really love seeing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, she has a solid skincare mm -hmm. routine, yeah. but yeah, if she is complaining about certain issues, mm -hmm. I do think that people maybe don't target those issues mm -hmm. enough in both yeah. of the routines. Like yeah. I always think of my routines as like two opportunities yeah. for me to Absolutely. target my yeah. issues, yeah. right? What do you think about her using a cleanser that has like salicylic acid mm -hmm. in it or something? Yeah, I think that's a great addition that can not only target some of the dullness and dry skin, but also help a little bit with the acne too. Mm -hmm. So you don't think that would like further dry her skin? I think it depends on the formulation. I think going with a more creamy based formulation that contains salicylic acid can be very helpful. One that I really love is from Cetaphil. Their acne line has a, they have a new cleanser that's 2% with salicylic acid. It's a creamy cleanser. I actually use that myself in the morning and I love it. It's great. Great. So we think for her morning skincare routine, a really good complete morning mm -hmm. skincare routine could mm -hmm. have maybe a salicylic acid cleanser mm -hmm. like the mm -hmm. one you said from Cetaphil, maybe a vitamin C serum yeah, or some type of a it. serum. Yep. I'm a big fan of the niacinamide serums yep. out there, obviously. Stick with her moisturizer, mm -hmm. we like that one. Yeah. Actually, I think that moisturizer has, has niacinamide. niacinamide. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then a sunscreen that we think is more of like a cream kind of sunscreen. Yeah, she can apply yeah. Really or really serum type yeah. texture, yeah. And then her other one, her stick to carry around with her. For reapplication throughout the day. Perfect. All right, let's get into her nighttime routine. Yeah. Which is it's the same thing, which is the Laura Shea plus a hydrating cleaning cleanser and then moving on with kind of like a sandwich layer that I put in between my treatment and so forth which is the moisturizing cream from the Laura Shea plus a. then the treatment for the acne which is Epic Dual it has a dappling and benzoyl peroxide first question is I'm a big fan of the double cleanse. Me I hate too. pushing it on people, <laughs> but I just too. think it's so good. I know. So people ask this all the time. If I'm only wearing sunscreen during the day, yeah. do I double cleanse? I'm a big fan as well because of how I structure my routine. But, you know, assuming that she's wearing sunscreen and reapplying throughout the day, those sunscreens tend to be more water resistant. So she may be not effectively removing that sunscreen, which could indirectly can be contributing to some of her acne. And so, yeah, she may want to stretch up uh, like a different type of cleanser or a double cleanse to effectively remove all of that. But yeah, in general, if you are using more water resistant sunscreen, I don't find that those creamy gentle cleansers are as effective at removing everything. What I have found uh -huh. is when you use these creamy cleansers on dry skin first, yeah. oh. then add water, like you massage yeah. it on your skin, it helps break yeah. it down a little yeah. bit more. Or just maybe she could use the same cleanser and just do, do it, it twice. twice. So then second question, Epiduo, what do yeah. you think about that? I don't see that product come up too much when I'm talking to people. It's a prescription of two ingredients containing benzoyl peroxide and adapalene, like she said. We don't prescribe it as often because number one, it tends to be more expensive, so often insurance may not cover it. And two, I personally don't like it because it can be very irritating. Mm. The combination of leave-on benzoyl peroxide and adapalene, most people don't tolerate it very well. I mean, a lot of people even have a hard time just tolerating the adapalene. And Mm -hmm. So benzoproxide and dapaline or just a retinoid prescription retinoid are like what dermatologists say is like the dynamic dual when it comes to treating acne topically. So I do love those two ingredients. I just don't like the formulation of the epidural. I think there are other ways of using the two that are still effective and less irritating. And that could be the reason why she's kind of reporting that she's dry and flaky mm -hmm. in, in her face. It could be very much from the epiduol to at least contributing to that. When it comes to something like epiduo, what are you recommending instead? 
So I recommend just breaking that product down into two separate things. So like a benzoyl peroxide cleanser, which is my favorite, or you can use a benzoyl peroxide to like spot treat certain areas. And there are certain brands that have more gentle benzoyl peroxide formulation and then using your adapalene at night all over. Cause assuming she's using the epidural all over, cause that's really how you're going to get your benefit of adapalene. Yeah, that is how you can really get irritation from yeah, that. Yeah, that makes use. sense. And, yeah. and you know, you, when you had pointed out that she was like kind of pointing to her T-zone mm -hmm. area being like the dry irritated mm -hmm. area, that's almost like the opposite that most people mm -hmm. will talk about too. Yeah. So it almost seems like she might even be like focusing on those areas yeah. and mm -hmm. then she's Getting causing more that more irritation. irritation. And then dryness, yeah, Interesting, absolutely. interesting. Cleanser for benzoyl peroxide. I think that Panoxyl has some great products out mm -hmm. there for cleanser. And speaking of those different percentages, mm -hmm. you can get it in a lower percentage mm -hmm. that you can use like almost daily, I think. Yeah. They have yeah. like a daily one yeah. and then they have their like 10% or something mm -hmm. like that, right? Yeah. My personal favorite acne cleanser with benzoyl peroxide that I use every night after I remove my makeup with my cleansing balm or cleansing oil is the one from CeraVe. Mm -hmm. They're 4% benzoyl peroxide and that is creamy. It's gentle. I leave it off for a few minutes and I have not had an issue. That is for, good for, to know. for those who have more dry and sensitive skin. Yeah. And then I've also heard that benzoyl peroxide, it's like one of those ingredients that not only is it like really strong, mm -hmm. but it also doesn't like other people. Like it doesn't <laughs> like other ingredients, right? Like it doesn't yeah. play well in the schoolyard with the other ingredients. Yeah, it can. Also, it can be one of those where, you know, it may like bleach your like nice pillowcase or towels yeah. or t-shirts. Mostly they'll leave on product, which is another reason why I'm a big advocate of the cleansers. But yeah, theoretically, because it kind of just oxidizes and that's how it kind of is anti-inflammatory and antimicrobial, it can really oxidize certain things like your retinoid, certain types of retinoids, and then like vitamin C, for example, and then like hydroquinone as well. They're kind of the common ones. Yeah. And, but usually, again, in a cleanser, if you wash it off, the reaction doesn't stay on your skin, so usually it shouldn't be an issue. Right. An issue. Okay, so then you think for her, adapalene on its own mm -hmm. would be a really good mm -hmm. option, like a different or yeah. Roche Posay yeah. or something. Absolutely. And then followed by the moisturizer again. And then when days I don't use the moisturizer. She just brought up, I, I keep being like, I keep stopping. She's doing the sandwich mm -hmm. method. You want to tell everybody what the sandwich method is? Yeah, so it's a way of applying your moisturizer and your active ingredient most commonly used with topical retinoids to lessen the irritation and to help you tolerate your prescription medications better. And so the idea behind it is you cleanse your face, immediately put on your moisturizer when your skin is damp because that will help to see in the moisture. And then you wait for some time until that absorbs and then apply your topical retinoid and then follow that with a moisturizer. And so you're really locking, making a retinoid sandwich. Yep. And that can help to lessen the irritation and make you better tolerate your retinoids. And it doesn't cut out the efficacy, interestingly, mm -hmm. they've done studies. And so for those individuals who really have a hard time tolerating topical retinoids, that's one of the ways dermatologists recommend applying the medication. The days when I don't use the treatment, I would use the vitamin C serum, which is this 20% anti-aging serum, which just has hyaluronic acids. And then I, once that dries up or let it sit in, I will go into my moisturizer, which is from La Roche-Posay. And then depending how dry I am, sometimes I'm alternating with is the CRV moisturizing cream, the big tub one that you could pick up from Costco. And then recently, not long ago, about I want to say a month ago, I incorporate exfoliating cleanser. All right, so before we get into that cleanser, she brought up a vitamin C. So mm -hmm. we actually know she has a vitamin C. What do you think about her using it in her nighttime routine? It's not my typical way of using it. I think most people recommend using it in the morning because mm -hmm. it helps to fend off oxidation. It also makes works better with your sunscreen. But I don't think there's anything wrong with using vitamin C at night because your skin does repair itself overnight and you're re like adding in or replenishing the vitamin C that's been depleted naturally in your skin at night. But I think you're gonna get the most benefits in the morning. Okay, could yeah. she maybe use it in the morning and then mm -hmm. on the nights that she's alternating, still mm -hmm. use it at night? Yeah. I, which is I use only once a week and what I know is this one does have frequency. I normally try to get things that doesn't have it and this is from Neutrogena Hydro Bruce Exfoliating Cleanser. It has hyaluronic acid in it. It does come along with a cleanser as well, the Hydro Boost Hydrating Cleansing Gel, which is I have not started using this yet, but eventually if this is okay with me, I would end up start using this brand for my cleanser and just keep the moisturizer as same as usual. And yeah, that's pretty much my morning 
a night routine and pretty much I just want to get treated as literally the hyperpigmentation I have because ever since when I was a kid I hardly wear any sunscreen so there's a lot of pimples, hyperpigmentation and so forth and then pretty much hormonal acne which is something that can't be in control besides just treating it whenever it flares up and then pretty much treating the dryness and start working on anti-aging because I do have like some textured skin that's not really that visible and yeah that's pretty much it thank you for you guys helping me Oh, she's really mm -hmm. sweet. So she pulled out that exfoliating cleanser. I was fully expecting to be like, oh, she's got a salicylic acid mm -hmm. cleanser. Mm -hmm. We just looked up the ingredients of it and it's really, it's truly a super mm -hmm. gentle mm -hmm. exfoliating cleanser. But this one has a lot of AHAs in mm -hmm. it. So it's got some lactic acid in it. It has some glycolic acid mm -hmm. in it and then some papaya extracts mm -hmm. in it that mm -hmm. help to exfoliate more like yep. as enzymes. Mm -hmm. But you know, like, Listening to what she says, mm -hmm. you tell me. I feel like she keeps talking about her hyperpigmentation, but we're not really seeing anything mm -hmm. that addresses the hyperpigmentation and that dullness slash anti-aging yeah. that she's talking about, yeah. right? Yep, and also remember that you know her, her hormonal acne is one of her biggest concerns, and that is the cause behind her hyperpigmentation. So when you're treating hyperpigmentation, really want to first and foremost address the underlying issue. So she was saying how you know she's really wanting to take a more proactive approach instead of just treating it as they come on maybe this is what this would be a good time to revisit with your dermatologist and talk about some of the other options available and we have great options available for hormonal acne that may add additional kind of benefit to her overall treatment plan got it you're talking yeah. things like even just like spironolactone, or, spironolactone or, oral contraceptive pills mm -hmm. that are really helpful i'm gonna create like my dream scenario for her when it comes to her skincare routine and you tell me what you think morning skincare routine i actually think we like nailed it mm -hmm. like it was salicylic acid yeah. cleanser maybe a vitamin C. Mm -hmm. Her mm -hmm. La Roche-Posay moisturizer, yep. it's great. Also has some niacinamide in yep. it. And then getting her like a sunscreen that mm -hmm. we think is like really nice and light. Yep. What's one of your favorite sunscreens right now? If she likes that Tularian line, I mean, they make an SPF that is really very similar formulation and finish that has SPF 30. So mm -hmm. I think that's a great one to try. I mean, also the Ho and Helios line have really nice sunscreens that are really great for oily and dry skin mm. that I really like. I think La Roche-Posay in general just makes really elegant sunscreens. Alta MD is really nice too. Oh yeah, I love yeah. Alta MD. When it comes to nighttime though, mm. I think there's a lot of stuff we, we can, can do, do right? Yeah, like absolutely. I, I would want her to do a double cleanse, mm -hmm. getting an oil cleanser yep. in there. I think people when they suffer from acne sometimes avoid that double cleanse because they're worried about like an oil-based cleanser. What do you yeah. think about that? I think it's fine. It can definitely help to remove everything more thoroughly. Just make sure you follow it and remove the residue with a water-based cleanser. So definitely an oil-based cleanser to start going in with you know, either yeah. like a benzoyl peroxide Backside. cleanser, yeah. like you said, or yeah. her regular cleanser. That Neutrogena one that she got with yeah. with the exfoliating one, yeah. I think like is fine, right? So I think that would be really good for her. And then the thing that I think she's really lacking, and you tell me this, is like an ingredient that really focuses on her hyperpigmentation. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Especially on those off nights when she's not using mm -hmm. her, like whatever retinoid she's yep. using. Absolutely. What do you think about hydroquinone and all of those types of ingredients? You know, I think hydroquinone is one of those ingredients. I feel like even with dermatologists, it's like they love it or hate it. And I think it, it is, we have a lot of data and it's one of the most effective. We used to call it like our gold standard, but we also now have a lot of great other, you know, skin lightening ingredients that can help with various sorts of hyperpigmentation. It is one of those things that can be very, very tricky. So if used, I definitely recommend seeing a dermatologist and used under the guidance of a dermatologist. But also for many individuals who are not able to see a dermatologist who are a little bit afraid of that rebound or irritation, a lot of great ingredients like niacinamide, alpha hydroxy acid, which can definitely target her concerns of hyperpigmentation, as well as some of the early signs of fine lines and, and aging that she is wanting to kind of get a handle on. But like tranexamic acid, acetic acid, I mean, we have a lot of great ingredients I think she could incorporate into her routine. Obviously not everything at once, right? Especially with yeah. our sensitive skin, but those are options that she has available. For sure. So we're double cleansing. On some nights we're using lactic acid or whatever alpha hydroxy mm -hmm. acid. And then on the other nights we're using our 
retinoid mm -hmm. and you still think adapalene for her. I think adapalene, if she's tolerating adapalene fairly well, especially if she removes that like epidural, that benzoproxide component, she if she wants to get a better handle on her acne and also uh, kind of target the signs of aging, she could get a prescription tretinoin that will do both. She's um, kind of like rotating between the CeraVe moisturizer mm -hmm. and then the La Roche-Posay. I personally think she might get more benefit from the La Roche-Posay as far as like hydration and moisture mm -hmm. than the CeraVe. I think a lot of people don't realize that the CeraVe can be a little bit more occlusive. Like mm -hmm. it tends to sit on the top yeah. of the skin a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. So without like those hydrating ingredients in her yeah. routine, yeah. I mean, unless she got like a spray toner and I don't want to like complicate this, but like a spray toner and put that on and then put the CeraVe on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I almost think she's lacking that like Hydration. hydration. Absolutely. I mean, the other thing too, if she feels like La Roche-Posay is not like heavy enough or she just needs something extra, this is where I love like spot treating with a thicker moisturizer or even like a petrolatum based ingredient, but not using it all over, but just areas where she feels like she could use a little bit more like commonly like around the nose mm -hmm. or at the mouth where she's feeling like dry and flaky. Got it. So she's like put the La Roche-Posay on yeah. and then put yeah. a thicker moisturizer yeah. on. I think we nailed Yay. that one. <laughs> I feel really good about this. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah All right. Well, Lisa, obviously, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below. You can also reach back out to us. If you have any comments or questions about Lisa's routine, or if you want to submit your routine, definitely check out our description box where we have all of the information. And you can also leave a comment as well. Dr. Jenny Liu, tell them where they can find you on social media. You can find me on Instagram at derm.talk. And I recently just started a YouTube channel. So I'd love for you guys to come over there and give me some love. I love that. <laughs> You can also find me. I'm on Instagram at Susan Yara, and we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.